This segment of Domarvel Life is brought to you by the Veterinary Medical Center in Easton. You know, this time of year, we're, we're just got a new friend there. We're pretty diligent to make sure our little ones are protected. You cover them in sunscreen, sign them up for swimming lessons, bust out the bug spray to protect them from all of the annoying pests. Now, if you're going to do that for your two legged kids, wouldn't it make sense to also do it for your four legged kids, right? Because there's dangers out there that can ar arise this time of year. And here to walk us through some of them is Dr. Elizabeth Bruce, w Elizabeth <laughs> Bruce with the Veterinary Medical Center in Easton. Thank you so much for joining us today with our friend. Asher. 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 Asher is very excited to be here. <laughs> so awesome. there, you know, we were talking before we, we came on screen or on camera about the, the different dangers. There's a lot more, but we're going to talk about some of the more typical ones first, uh, starting off with uh, thunderstorms. A lot of animals are afraid of them. I, yeah, I assume it's a noise phobia. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, I guess it may be just the sound, but many dogs have varying degrees of panic mm -hmm. associated with that sound. Uh, you know, mild cases, you could put your uh, dog, wrap them in a, in a little coat that's called a thunder shirt. It's right, actually yeah. like a t-shirt material. It's real yeah. tight and snugs them and comforts them. Other times you could use a calming collar. These are collars that are, emit these pheromones that just help them relax them. Okay. But if the dog is destructive, which in that they're going to hurt themselves, like some right. dogs will go right through a wall. They're oh so nervous. They need to speak to your veterinarian if your dog is that anxious and consider and medications or even some therapy to help kind of desensitize them to that. Right. And I guess fireworks would fall into the same fireworks, kind of especially storms and things. I th my dogs are okay with storms, but fireworks really bother them. It's a like crack. Really? You know? yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about some of the dangers. Um, you, you may not think about it, but uh, pets can actually drown. Um, uh, it, there, I, it's sad for me to tell you I have at least two to three of those a summer. Really? Seriously. Some of them are dogs who are, you know, have been swimmers, but they just have overdone it and they're just exhausted. Mm -hmm. And they go down and it's, you know, they, they, they don't. just like us, I mean, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. inhale water. Um, others are older pets who don't have the strength. Um, and then some are like Asher who would sink like a stone if yeah. he was in water over his head. He's just He's anatomically not built to yeah. be able to do with that. Right, now, right. did you bring something along with you here? Yeah. That, uh... um, any dog that's in a boat mm -hmm. needs to wear this. I don't care if they're a world famous Labrador who can swim. Right. I mean, it, you know, falling in the water, depending on the temperatures, they can over, they can actually here, overheat Asher. from swimming. <laughs> but that sits right on top of them, straps around them. It's really pretty comfortable <laughs> and- Just goes over like know, that. And you even he, get a handle. To he, help get him out of the water. Yeah, and he would not, he would be safe if he fell in. Right. Huh. So imperative that they wear something like that. And Super swimming dangerous. pools, too. I mean, most of our dogs who are used to swimming pools are fine, but he couldn't be near a pool. He's the kind of dog who would just jump right in. Watch yeah. this, boom. Yeah, yeah. You know? and not be able to get so out. So make sure if you have a pool, it's fenced in. If and you, you mentioned overheating. They can't overheat. Uh, dogs overheat. That's probably even more common than the previous that we mentioned. Drowning. Right. Um, some dogs built like Asher, he's got a very short face that's called brachycephalic. Yeah. Uh, these short face dogs, um, they just don't cool as well. Plus they're very muscular, so they're producing a lot of heat. Right, right. Uh, so a dog like Asher in temperatures over 75 for 15 minutes, it could do him in. So if you're taking him out for a walk, you pay can't attention do to it him. in the busy don't do the same. Right, hours. Right. You met Noel. Right. And Noel can't go in, in temperatures over 60 for a walk. I mean, she can go maybe to the end of the street and back, but uh, she can't so go if, anywhere long. If they do get hot, there is something you can do. Well, on a walk, if it's even, you know, if I do take Asher, for instance, I take these, these are chamois, uh -huh. and they're real stiff and, and malleable, but if they're wet, they um, I can hold a ton of water. Right. So I carry a water bottle with me, and uh -huh. I can just pour the water on here and then squeeze cold water over them oh. during our walk. That's one right. thing. They actually make coats like this that they can wear, but I don't think that they evaporate quick enough. I like using it this way. Right, right. right. And you, um, all, you want to keep them hydrated as well too yep. during the hot keep times? Keep them hydrated. So in my little, which I carry water for mm -hmm. me, water for them, mm -hmm. I have a little and they make tons of these of different sizes, but. Oh, it's a little bowl. Oh. It's a little bowl. Okay. That's so, very clever. You know, Perfect. You can make Put sure they water have water there. wherever you are. Okay. Let's it, talk about the pavement when you take them for a walk. You need to be careful for. Yeah, I've had dogs come in who've actually burned their pads. 
from the pavement. Uh, the ones who you see it most often from are dogs that are around a pool because the concrete gets so yeah. hot and they just don't know when to stop. They're running and running and running and playing and they just yeah. can't let go. Um, so make sure you're walking your dog on, either put some food, booties on them or you can uh, just make sure you go in the cool, warm, oh. cooler parts of the day, cool. early morning or late evening. We're working in the garden a lot. There's problems out there too. Yeah, that's well, another reason I brought Asher. Uh, this dog will eat anything. Um, I had to get a fence built around my little garden because he was systematically eating all the yellow pyrethrin flowers and, that's and then good. he would throw up. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. And so I had to garden that off from, wall it off from him to get in there. Big concern for people are, are weed, fertil uh, weed killers. Some of those other fertilizers and um, insecticides particularly are pretty toxic. We got some friends coming over for barbecue. Can, can I slip some of the barbecue to the dogs? Yeah, yeah, you do that and you'll be coming to see me the next day. Oh. Not good, huh? <laughs> Not good. Pork bones, especially splinter, and are, you know, so everybody wants to eat their ribs and give the ribs give to the, the dogs. Right. No. I don't advise that. Sometimes the drippings from the barbecue grill will end up on the ground and the dogs will eat that. So I've had dogs come in with eating, having eaten the charcoal because it tastes oh good. My. Hmm. Um, so just, just be extra careful, yeah, Dr. They, Elizabeth Bruce. They love to eat it, but it's all bad. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Thank you so thank much. You veterinary so much. Veterinary, veterinary Medical too. Center and Easton. Oh, and thank you, Asher, for being our eye candy. Okay, That's you a can't perfect protect. example of everything bad. <laughs> everything bad. Right <laughs> a dog to do in the summer. Yes.